the September 5th, 2023 Angels Camp City Council meeting. Um, roll call, please, Brett. Mayor Herndon. Present. Vice Mayor Moncada. Present. Council Member Borlio. Present. Council Member Sherrado. Present. Staff is present. Pledge of allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Yeah. 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 Report out of closed session. Um, item A, direction was given to staff. And for item B, I'll read the following statement. As mayor, it is my unfortunate obligation to inform you that council member Gretel Scornia vacated her position on this city council on August 31st, 2023. Council member Scornia served our community with honor, dignity, and worked tirelessly to better angels. While the circumstances leading to council member Scornia to step down are temporary in time, to stay on the council, she would have been required to sever ties with her local business. While no elected official should have to choose between their elected position and business, as council members we do not make the rules or necessarily even agree with them, the rules we are now required to follow. I would like to personally thank Gretel for all of her hard work and for over the last several years. Okay. I know she will continue to be involved and improve to, to improve our community, and I would like to thank her for her service. Um, also on that note, Gretel has a statement that she has sent that I will read to you. Mm -hmm. Dear people of Angels Camp, I am so sad to be vacating my seat as one of your trusted city council, city council members. It has been an amazing experience in my life and please know that my heart and focus will not change just because my title has. I love this city, especially downtown, and I will always work to make it better. It is the best place to live in California, except for maybe on the beach. <laughs> it has truly been an honor to represent the awesome city, awesome citizens of this town. Forever grateful, Grill. <clears throat> okay, taking us to item four, planning commission appointment. The review and appointment of one planning commissioner member to fill a vacancy with a term set to expire on June 30th of 2023. Rose. So we have three applicants um, who applied. Daniel Whitford, who could be in the audience. Thank you. Uh, Matt Samarjohn, who's in the audience. Uh, we have Joseph Jacobs, who had a family emergency and couldn't attend tonight. So. Um, Normally, what it, you guys have done in the past is have them stand up, introduce themselves, explain to you why they want to be on the planning commission, and you can ask additional questions of them. And then from there on, one of you, whoever you choose, you can appoint. So, okay, thank you for that. Uh -huh. um, so, just because it's first in my packet, Daniel Whitford, would you like to step up uh, at the podium and? Talk to us. We do have your um, application in front of us, so we know a little bit about you. Yeah. Hello. Hi. Good afternoon. I think the mic's just is on. Show is it? I've seen this. So tell us about yourself. Okay, um, first of all, obviously, I'm Danny Whitford. Um, I grew up in Angels Camp. Um, I uh, moved back in about 2019 and uh, kind of decided, you know, this is my home, this is where I want to stay. And um, I see a lot of things going on in Angels Camp, and a lot of things are pending. And kind of wonder what's going on. And someone brought up the planning commission position, and um, I put in my application and did a little research, and now I'm here. So I'd like to ask a question. Um, you talk in your experience about 
uh, some extensive utility and public works and water and wastewater? Correct. Where, where was that? Um, let's see. I actually, my first job was at the City of Angels uh -huh. when I was in my early 20s and uh, worked for municipalities such as Hetchy, uh, City of Patterson, San Leandro, uh, Murphy Sanitary District, and um, I do part time contracting on the flume. Mm -hmm. You do during the outage? Yes. November? Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. We need that so much. Okay. Uh, I have a question on a general engineering contractor. So you're still licensed. Are you and you're currently working? It's, and where are you doing that at? I'm doing that out of Angels. Okay. So I have a question. How do you feel in terms of making hard decisions? Um, sitting up here, it's always glamorous and fun. You just have to make hard decisions, and I know uh, sometimes things that come to the planning commission for that as well. Yeah, it's, you know, I think the hard decisions are like, you know, it's not necessarily black and white, it's the good or the good or what's better, but I think, um, you know, you have to think about the community, basically, you know, you've got your little headline of you, you know, the mission statement, I mean, hard decisions, I mean, I guess their decisions are just hard, I mean, they require more help. <laughs> uh, and as, anybody else? Uh, as for me, uh, the, the aspect, three ways uh, the city needs to improve on the most, um, I kind of like where you're going with some of this, um, like the Highway 49 bypass, the sidewalks, uh, they do not connect to downtown yet, which are all things that are, like the sidewalks connecting are in the works, um, with Caltrans and different things. But I like I like those ideas you have there, because those are pretty main things that we're looking at more working to right now and, and coming up in the next couple of years. For me, I was no question. I just like where you find was going on that. Yeah, I just kind of like to make Angels Camp a little smoother. And yeah, there's a lot of um, it's just a lot of things that are kind of vacant, you know. Yeah, and you're kind of like maybe that we could do something with them, you know. Jenny, one more question for me. Um, you've been a, a citizen of the city since 2019. Is that correct? correct? And how many city council or Planning Commission meetings have you attended? I have not attended. Any other questions? I think my only other question is if, uh, if you don't get on the Planning Commission, would have any interest in the city council? Potential. That's just. My, I guess my only, like my last question would be, um, do you, are you in full understanding of the job of the planning commission versus what the job of the city council is? Well, since I haven't done it, yeah. I can't say that, you know, Yeah. but um, I'm willing to yeah. do my due diligence. I think I have a grasp, but do I? Has <laughs> to be determined. <laughs> Well, I'd like to personally thank you for your time and your effort. It's not easy getting up there. Thank you for your interest. Thank you. And it's nice to meet you. Thank you. So next, I'd like to invite Matthew Stammerich on to introduce himself. Good evening. I'm Matt Stammerich on, and uh, I've resided in, I've returned to the city in 1997 to start my chiropractic practice and uh before that i was uh traveling the world and uh going to college uh angels camp has always been my home of record so uh growing up here um what else do you need to know introduce myself i have lived in the city since 1997 uh for this last bell what made you want to Planning Commission? Okay. Um, actually, I was warned not to do it by my father, who did it for 16 years <laughs> in the 70s, 80s, and early 90s. Uh, uh, I saw how much work that he had put into it, and uh, he had his hands in a lot of things, and he was he was a land surveyor, and, and he dedicated a lot of time to the city, and uh, being an engineer himself, that would be a really good fit for the City of Angels. Uh, planning Commission, I didn't feel like I was ready for City Council. 
uh, wanted to get my fingers into it a little bit more and see what was going on. Um, does that answer? Mm -hmm. That kind of rolls into my question. So, uh, do you have an understanding of the planning commission's role versus the city council's role? Yes, uh, more advisory as a planning commissioner. Uh, not making all the hard decisions, more uh, uh, working with staff and, and making suggestions to the to help the city council make better decisions. How many meetings have you attended? Um, in the last couple of years, uh, not so many, but when the tractor supply <laughs> stuff was going up, that was pretty well known. <laughs> uh, and that was several years ago. I couldn't put a number on it. Uh, but I've attended both city council and planning commission meetings uh, maybe two to three times a year throughout the years. Maybe less in the years before. I don't think tractor supply. Yeah. I'll ask the same question. How do you feel about hard decisions, especially being a business owner? Uh, and that's another reason I have been put in for city council for a long time, uh, making hard decisions. And uh, I am a business owner, and uh, sometimes people take things pretty darn rough. I think with the planning commission, I wouldn't be so much in the forefront. You can call me a chicken if you want. Uh, uh, but uh, hard decisions, if, if they need to be made. Uh, if, if it's, if it's going to save the city and help save the budget and everything else, then it needs to be done. Uh, rather than, I, I don't think the city has too much of a problem there, but uh, uh, yeah, not a problem. So that's where I was going to tie in real quick. Like, no, you're good. Uh, on the last part of what does city improve on the most? You have enforcement, like code enforcement, commercial building permit enforcement, and more enforcement, repair, removal of dangers. That is going to take the heat, is all. Um, so I just well I think I think if it's if it's spelled out in the city and and it's something that uh, a commissioner or a city council member can stand behind and say this you know this is we're not making this up on the fly then enforcement should be done right if it's on oh, the I'm, hooks <laughs> I'm, I'm down, yeah <laughs> so. Anything else? Question? Well, thank you for your time. Thank you thank for you. this not easy getting up there and doing this, but thank you for your time and interest. Would be so if if possible, if we can have both Matt and Daniel, if we can have you step outside so that we can Talk about it. Talk about it. <laughs> Thank you. Amongst all our friends. Yeah, right. <laughs> and you too. Yeah. <laughs> so is it is it this time that um, we are going to consider appointing one of the two applicants? Um, I do want to speak to the vacancy for this uh, seat. Um, the reason for this vacancy is because Robert Moncada, who's here with us tonight, he did hold that planning commission seat for over eight years. He was dedicated and devoted, and I would like to... I would like to screech. I would like to publicly address him and thank him for his time and his dedication and his devotion for all of those years. So, so at this time, do we have any public comment about our decision that we're getting ready to make? Robert, do you want to tell how, how hard or how easy it is? Yeah. 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 Some things don't happen right away and take some time, but eventually, and hopefully it happens, right? But it's, I think everybody's got to put in their, their two cents if you're a citizen of this city, and that's the reason why I was there, and I thought I had 
done my duties and then it was time to stand down and let somebody else step up. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> this is gonna. This isn't even on there. I don't believe I need it, do I? I just wanted to ask the other gentleman that couldn't be here. Is he not going to get a chance? I just he no. He is going to get a chance. The oh. location is still here. Oh. It's just unfortunate that they can't interview him. Like right, exactly. Okay, that's okay. okay. I just yep. wanted to make sure he got into. Yeah, you know. And that. that okay, was thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Do you want thank us you. to read his application? Yes, please. No. No, oh, okay. so I it to you. Okay, so we know we know that Joseph Jake it's in uh, it's in the packets if anybody grabbed a packet. It's the, it's the, the, yeah, no, it's not, oh it's not the full packet, my bad. Uh Joseph Jacobs is the third applicant, and what I know is that this individual has lived in uh Angels Camp for about eleven months and is a registered voter. Um, their experience in knowledge and insight in planning or civic participation is that they are a realtor for 51 years and a broker for 16 years, a teacher at high school and coaching for 33 years. Um, it doesn't quite say where any of that occurred, but that's their experience. And then from a city planning aspect, um, they feel that the city is doing these items well. Uh, Habitat Homes, Utica Park, and Wayfinding Signs. And then from a planning aspect, what the city needs to improve on are those same dogs. Just kidding. <laughs> not the same three. Um, weed abatement, dead shrubs, and tree removal we need to improve on. Family activity facilities, a rec center with a pool or bowling, and bringing businesses back downtown. So that's what we know about Joseph Jacobs. Okay, so any more public comment or anybody online, Rose? No comments online. Well, I'll take people online. But no hands raised. Okay, so at this time we'll close public comment, comment and I will bring it back to council for discussion and or a motion to move forward. So, my other question, do we have to give Joseph time to speak in this or is this application process is just enough? Okay, so we'll have the postponing thing because you had it. Okay. Um, all right, so for me, I'll go first. Um, Daniel, for me, as what he wants to work on and improve on, fits more into it for me than what Matt does. Not to say I don't think enforcement and that type of stuff is really important, um, but you know, the vacant businesses. Trying to want to do stuff like with Napa, which you already have to be a plan with that. Um, but the sidewalks, he's thinking about the same type of things that I am at this moment. So for me, uh, my vote is for Daniel, just because of what the application it lines up with my thinking. So I think it's great that we have so much interest for one position because, as we know in the past, there isn't typically a lot of interest in these public positions. Um, Having said that, I think that both candidates are well qualified and can do the job, so I'm kind of split. Yeah. And even with Jacob, who's not here, I liked what he said about Eric oh. Fitton and Chris. Mm -hmm. One of them, you know, the rec center kind of was interesting. No, yeah, good ideas, all three of them. We're going to take them all. <laughs> 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 You're not going to be right. It's all decisions. We're going to have any decisions. Uh, I do agree it's going to be a tough decision. Um, I agree that both all three candidates would be a, a likely fit. Um, I, I am uh, leaning towards Mr. Stammerjohn um, for the reasons of, I, I feel that he has a, a better understanding of city council, I'm sorry, of planning versus city council as well as um, his, his involvement. I think he's been to several of the meetings. I think that maybe he's been a little bit more boots on the ground involved in the, in the last uh, couple of years. So maybe that will help in a transition for, for, for him uh, on an on a onboarding training kind of situation. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the direction I need there. That's so hard. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
Uh, I just remember you have to make a motion on who you're watching. Right. Yeah. I do like that Daniel has a general engineering background and background in the public works um, water wastewater, but um, that might be more helpful on city council. <laughs> so, um, yeah. I mean, Matt's been super involved. He's been coming to a ton of meetings and he's. Um, So, and unfortunately, yeah. I'm yeah. Here. Hard. yeah, I will make a motion to appoint Matthew Stammerjohn for city council. I'm sorry for Godless. <laughs> We're planning to clarify that later. Okay, yeah, I will second that motion. Okay. Look, see, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Yeah. Okay. So, Rose, that passes on a three to one. And we can bring them back in. Anyway, we are taking the oath of office right, right away. Right yep. away. You're going to call them who, and I will do the oath. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So we got to talk about you. Uh, thank you both for your time and your effort and your interest. Um, it was not an easy decision, I can say that. And um, we all, we found great qualities in both of you. We wanted to have both of you, but Rebecca wouldn't let us. So uh, unfortunately, we did have to make a decision, and it was voted on to welcome Matt Stammerjohn to our plan. So I tried city council and they wouldn't let me do that either. So um, at this time, Matt, if you could come up, Rose will read you the post office. Stand right over there. I'm going to give this to you so you can follow along. If you can raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I, Matthew Aaron Stammer John. Do you solemnly swear. Do you solemnly swear. Or affirm that I. Or affirm that I will support and defend. Will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California against all enemies. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. And allegiance to the Constitution of the United States. To the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. That I will take this obligation freely. That I will take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Purpose of evasion. And that I will well. That I will well. And faithfully discharge. And faithfully discharge. The duties upon which I'm about to enter. The duties upon which I'm about to enter. <laughs> Last time I did that, I was showing my head. bring the clippers. Can we do that? Yeah. Yep. And I'm going to do that. Yeah. 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 And I, I don't know if it was saying that, but three applicants, that was no, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so thank you. And I mean, before we got like one, I mean, it, it, it's just wonderful that there was that much interest. So thank yeah. you. And Dan, you. Dan, oh, good luck to see you again. Yeah. Yeah. Um, see you again. Good. There we go. All right. Sorry. Okay. Moving on into item five is approval of the agenda as posted or amended. Does anybody have any amendments to make to the agenda as a yeah. I have a question. Why do you guys put over here um, it's five in June 30th, 2023? 26 is what that should say. Oh, he ended his term in 2023. Right. what I meant to say. But yes, it does say 20. It should say 26. <clears throat> Now, where we were looking at. Under, under, under the planning commissioner. Mm -hmm. I, 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 yeah. yeah. I was thinking of Robert when he was, but I put the date, so that's why. Okay. So, what Olga is saying, that is we have you as a whole 20 Correct. For and her. <laughs> 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 
Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and once again, approval of, of the agenda or any any public need to make any um, modifications to the agenda? Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll make a motion for Alvin? I'll second. Caroline. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That takes us to item six, which is public comment. The public may address the council on any item of public interest not otherwise on the agenda that is within the jurisdiction of the city. No action may be taken. Matters to be addressed may be referred to the city staff or placed on a subsequent meeting agenda. And speakers will be limited to five minutes per person. Do we have any public comment here tonight? And anybody online, Rose, raising their hand? Okay, seeing no public comment, we will close that. Item seven is consent agenda, and the one item that we have on consent tonight is the approval of the draft minutes from August 15th. Does anybody have any reason to hold that? I just need to abstain. Okay. Well, any public comment on our consent? I'll move to approve consent. And I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 301, Rose. So item 8 is our regular agenda. And 8A is a presentation from Amy Augustine, our city planner for the Utica Park. While we're queuing that up, how many of you are here to hear about the Utica Park? So well, no, nobody, nobody cares about Utica Park. I will probably tell you more than you ever wanted to know about Utica Park. And we're going to start with slide number three, which is the conceptual plan for Utica Park. And I'm going to give you a fair amount of background on this, because I know a lot of people think that Utica Park was supposed to be a new playground, and that was all that it was supposed to be. Um, the 750 members of the community who commented on what they wanted to see in the park disagreed. And um, as you'll see, um, it became a plan to include things like an amphitheater, because this is a rural recreation and tourism program. And I will show you the people who actually proposed that there be an amphitheater and what kind of amphitheater and how many people it should accommodate and what it should be used for. Um, the purpose is to have theater in the park, local theater production companies uh, from the high school. Um, we have a 100 member band, which is one of the oldest community bands in the United States. Um, a member of that band talked about what he'd like to see at the amphitheater, as well as um, having appearances there when there's an emergency. I don't know how many of you were ever present for the public safety power shutoffs um, that we had. We did briefings there. We held them underneath the pavilion at the time, and we were looking for something a little bit easier for people to gather around and actually see the person speaking and be able to answer questions and whatnot. So that's one of the reasons that is there, as well as the fact that the grant funding source required that you have a tourism component to your project. And the thought was this would bring more people downtown um, to shop in the local shops. There's also bocce courts proposed, hard courts for both basketball and pickleball. There is a renovation of the existing pavilion in part because right now you have one large expanse and the idea is we have to rent it out to one person and they use that whole facility. Sometimes we have three smaller groups who want to use it and we're going to try to design it so that you can actually have three smaller groups use it at the same time if necessary. The new playground, um, as you know, there, were, did, there was deterioration at some of the slides. Um, they would rip you apart pretty good if you went down them. I don't know if any of you ever got to look at that before we took it out. Um, we're also looking at doing some outdoor gym equipment for adults, not just children. For what? 
adults, oh, okay. outdoor exercise equipment for teens and adults, sitting areas for teenagers to talk, and we'll explain how that got included in the uh, proposal. New bathrooms, the number one request from the public was, we hate, well, not request, but we hate the bathrooms you have, please get better ones. So we are in fact um, at <coughs> new bathrooms. Go ahead for the next slide. Where is that? There will also be a trail that will go around it and go to each one of the historic types of uh, mining equipment that's there that you'll be able to walk around. And yes, you have a question. Sorry, the back to the other. What kind of ex exercise equipment? Is that what you said? Exercise equipment for adults. What, what does that entail? I'm not understanding that. So there's outdoor exercise equipment for things like you would do at a gym but you can do it outside in a park. So in other words, if you wanted to do stretching exercises, you wouldn't go to the children's playground. You would go to this. Oh, there's a designated area. You got it. And there's special equipment that that is used for full-size people and not five-year-olds. Okay, pull up bars that, are high. Yeah, like pull up bars. Pull up bars are high. Pull up bars are high. What I'm, my concern is. So, so actually, what I'm going to do, I'm Patty Holden. She's going to go ahead and do the presentation, and everyone should be. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. It's okay. So what we'll have her do is go through the presentation, and then we'll open up public comments. There's going to be a lot of questions, so just kind of jot oh, those yeah. down, and then you'll have your your, and then we'll have Amy address questions as best she can. And the things that I will talk about in addition to the components of the project is what the background was, the funding source, and how much outreach was required for it. The fact that there is still a stakeholder group that is going to be participating in the final design of the project because that was a conceptual plan you saw. It was not a final design. It was just a conceptual plan to identify what would go into the park and approximately where it would go in the park. What happened with trees and why some were removed and some were retained. All the monuments in the park and what we plan to do with them. Parking, safety, and next slide. And you'll notice that vision statement matches the vision statement that is on the wall behind our city council members. This is from the Angels Camp Strategic Plan, and it basically says that the whole idea behind most of the things we do here at the city council and in the city is to preserve our history and provide a safe and thriving community devoted to families, businesses, and visitors. And what I'm going to emphasize in the park design is we looked at families, businesses, and visitors. Next slide, please. Go ahead and go to the next one. We're also trying to implement some specific elements of the strategic plans as adopted by the city council, um, enhancing the city's appearance. I know it does not look that way right now at the park, but when we are done, we expect to have a plan that's integrated. All the buildings will, will look like they were designed at the same time and tied together. Yes, there will be green grass that will be back there um, and native plants and things like uh, roofs that will have metal roofs on them um, and sort of some rustic appearing buildings. We're also looking at economic development. I've already explained that we are including the amphitheater and stage there to bring in all sorts of activities economic development while using the city's social, cultural, environmental, and aesthetic resources. Obviously, Mark Twain is a big element of this. Um, one of the things we would love to have at the amphitheater would be some Mark Twain reenactors doing some of the stories um, that Mark Twain wrote. Next slide. Several other um, elements of the strategic plan for the city council that are being implemented through this park include circulation. Um, we have a, we have purchased two parcels adjacent to the park. Napa has been purchased by the city to add parking. The parcel adjacent to Napa has been purchased by the city to add a new roadway that can come out and improve the circulation at the park. All of you know how narrow Sam's Way is. 
When we had PG&E here for the public safety power shutoffs, the one thing that, um, and also when we've had uh, the Red Cross here, they've all come to the city and said, you really need to improve the way to get in and out of that park. We cannot get our trucks with our emergency response supplies in and out. We need you to improve the circulation. So that's both in and out of the park and within the park, we are hoping to improve that. Community identity, uh, obviously Mark Twain is going to be a large element of that, as well as all of the equipment that was mining equipment there. We hope to show everybody what it was used for when it was a mine and how it tied in and what it looked like originally while it was there. Uh, land use, well designed and to reflect the rural character of the community, as well as, uh, next slide. So that is what the city's goals are for the city. The grant itself emphasizes health for the residents, all residents, seniors, five-year-olds, everybody at the high school. It wants everybody to have some activity that's physically based in that park. Also visitors, again, amphitheater, and having a trailhead for the Angels Creek Trail. We are also planning to put that in the park. Next slide. So we started with a lot of outreach and we ended up reaching 750 individual people who gave us input. We started at the Frog Jump Parade because we figured we could get not only children, but their grandparents who might be there watching their kids, the parents who might be with their kids, um, that little gentleman in the hoodie that you see, he and his best friend decided that they wanted a baseball field, and so they sat there and we had jars set up so that they could put chips in it and say what they wanted. Well, they decided they wanted that baseball field real bad to the point where we had to start policing it because they were putting too many chips into the jars to make sure that they could get their baseball field. To the right there was the fireman's pancake breakfast. Again, we got a lot of community members who do a lot in the community, attend a lot of community events to give us input on what they wanted to see in the park. Next slide. Brett Park High School, we went to their leadership class. They were the very first place we visited. We also went to their high school physical education classes, every single one of them in a single day. They all sat down, threw out what they wanted to see, why they wanted to see it, and where they wanted to see it. And I will tell you in 1931, when the park was originally designed, the way they designed it, as they went to Brett Park High School and asked the high school students to design the park and held a design competition. So that is why we went to Brett Park and met with all the students that we could and asked them for their input and design. So we went to Foothill Village and that gentleman right there told us about the um, concerts that they have had their 100 piece community band and why we needed to, how we needed to design it for theater productions and what have you in the park. Next slide. And then the farmer's market. That's where we saw an enormous number of seniors who were walking around and one lady in a wheelchair with her daughter pushing her who informed us when we asked her what was most difficult or what they liked best about the park. They said, we cannot see our grandchildren play at the playground because we can't get a walker to go there we cannot get our wheelchair to go there. And then the daughter burst into tears because she was so glad that somebody had asked about having her mother be able to access sites on the area. So we are working really hard to make the main part of the park ADA accessible, not just for seniors and people with disabilities, um, but also some of the playground equipment so that kids, next slide, we also went to a children's story hour where we met kids that had one arm and such, and we want them to be able to participate on the children's playground equipment. So that also went into the design. Next slide. Planning Commission, we held some design meetings here with developers who happened to be there. 
I'm trying to remember if that was the one with tractor supply or not, but we had a few developers present and they actually helped us do some design at that particular one. Next slide. And of course, we attended three separate city council member meetings, uh, city council meetings to get input. We had drop-in days at the park where we would show up on holidays and ask individuals there what they wanted to see in the park. We went to the Sierra Hope food pantry to ask that part of the community who doesn't usually get to have a say what they wanted to see in the park. The craft and chicks antique and craft fair, women, infants, children clinic at St. Patrick's, and we even attended a homeowners association meeting at Greenhorn Creek where they were raising money um, for the park. Next slide. The reason I bring all this up is because, again, most of us think this was supposed to be it was all supposed to be a playground. Well, when you talk to the community, they wanted it to be an all age thing where all ages could come together, where visitors and residents could come together. That's why we are, as our grant says, we will bring together a park design committee. We've already talked to the high school and they will have representation on that park design committee so that as we get a preliminary design, they'll be able to still help us refine exactly what's gonna go in there, exactly what it's gonna look like, what they do or don't like. Um, we are going to be talking to the business community. We've got um, a person with disabilities who's going to be participating on that committee, as well as, I know I'm forgetting, several people who are also going to be on the committee for stakeholder outreach. But basically all those, uh, the high school, the leadership um, class is also going to be serving on that committee. Um, next slide. I wanted to tell you a little bit about the people that were hired to do the project. This is a design and build contract. Boyer Construction is the entity that we hired to do this. The reasons we hired them was because they are basically um, designing it without charging us so that they can put all the money into construction. They are currently looking at things like where if I was a parent, what I want my children to be in the playground, would I want to be able to see them? Or do we want them clear across on the other side of the playground? Where is it easiest to park for accessibility requirements? Things like that. Some of the projects they've been doing are Firefall Lodge, which is up near Groveland. They did both the Tuolumne and Groveland resiliency projects. Um, Somerville, Sonora High School, they're very community oriented. And when Robert Boyer came onto the site, he looked at it and he said, this is something I would be proud to put my name on. And that is how he is going about designing this. He knows his name's gonna be on it and his reputation. So he is bending over backwards to make sure that he has something here he can be proud of when he is done and that the community can be proud of when they're done. I'll show you a few examples of his work. Next slide. Some of the stuff he's done at Berkeley Tuolumne Camp, the uh, stage and amphitheater there. Next slide. Some of the uh, basketball courts and stuff and uh, animal shelter that he worked on. Next slide. This is the Resiliency Center in Tuolumne and in Groveland. And you'll notice on that slide on the right, you'll see a lot of green grass. Yes, he will likely be putting sod down again at, at our park once we get to that point. Next slide. Now comes the geotechnical issues that we've all heard about. You'll see a line, a red line going through there. That is the mother load. When you hear, I struck the mother load, that is the mother load vein that goes through the city and Sonora and other parts, Tuolumne, Calaveras, and North County. It physically goes through Utica Park and continues on to the property that we just purchased. That's a long way of saying we always knew there would be a portion or portions of this site that we would not be able to build on because of mine shafts. There's an area to the north of that where there had been a study done that said at least an acre of it would still be developable, developable, I'll get that spit out. Um, and so that's why we proceeded with this project and purchased that adjacent property. We also knew that we could use that area as open space for events, whether or not there was a structure on it. We have talked to two geotechnical firms who are both busy right now and 
do not want to um, get involved in a project where there's only a budget of $3 million. They like working on bigger projects where there are some geotechnical issues. So we are looking for a third entity. And right now it appears that we will probably not be able to put the seating for the amphitheater in the pit, um, but that we will likely put things that aren't structures over on that side. We can still put the trail. If we needed to swap the playground with the amphitheater, we could do that. Um, we can extend some of the parking area out and perhaps do engineered fill. So that is why you do not see a site plan yet. It's because we're trying to get a hold of um, the details from a geotechnical engineer to show us exactly how heavy a structure we can put on that portion of the site. But again, we will still have the trail there. We will still have bocce courts. We will still have uh, basketball courts. We will still have play equipment and gym equipment because again, those are not structures. Next slide. Tree removal. We have the San Joaquin County Office of Education, Greater Valley Conservation Corps, very long name. Um, do all the vegetation removal on site. Why? Because one, you get extra points on your grant if you ask them. And two, because all the people that participated, they were trained. They can now go from this job where they got this training out and get a job with the Forest Service. And so we basically train people to get um, living wage jobs by having that entity do our clearing for us on the site, as well as we now will be able to partner with them to do other clearing that the city needs on a regular basis. Memorial trees, just wanted to add that quickly. We've had several people approach us who have had loved ones and they've asked if they can purchase a tree to replant in the park in the name of their loved one. Yes, we will be establishing a list um, so that people can do that. And so far we've had a huge amount of interest in that. Next slide. So 16 trees were evaluated, nine were removed. Next slide. You can't see that very well, but what that, every time it's highlighted in yellow, it said something's gonna get damaged, somebody's going to potentially get killed or will mess up somebody's car if we um, don't pick that tree up. So once it were yellow, basically they were rotted in the middle, they were rated as poor, risk was rated as high, those were removed. We basically had a whole bunch more that were fair um, with a water at risk and um, we retained most of those. Next slide. We removed several um, that were poor and moderate risk because in order to maintain them, we were told you would have to go out and prune 15% this year, 15% next year, 15% the year after that, and pretty soon you would have a tree that had like a stump, hardly any branches, and about then it would die. So for economic reasons and for maintenance reasons, we went ahead and took those out. Next slide. And the next. Some of the trees we removed, um, there, was, there were several comments about, hey, why did you take the trees out before you had a final site plan? Well, the reason was we didn't take any tree out that wasn't a risk to either property or people. The one that was in the middle of the playground, we took out because it was rotted on the interior and the arborist told us to remove it or somebody would be injured. The one in the middle, that black walnut, you can see how deteriorated it was. And then tree number 3274 on the left was actually leaning towards the highway. And there was a fear that it would fall onto the highway. Next slide. You'll see that yellow area and you're probably thinking, well, you removed all those. Why did you remove all those? Next slide. All those were Alanthus. Chinese tree of heaven. Those are commonly referred to by botanists as wheat. Um, they are a non-native tree that does not allow anything else to grow near it. And so we are we removed those and we removed 
prove it, which grows really, really fast. Any of you who are gardeners have probably had to get rid of it over and over and over again. And all that mass that was in that corner, next slide, was basically privet and alanthus. Next slide. We also took out some of those trees that burned. We didn't evaluate them, but after the fire, they were burnt to a crisp, so those were taken out. I'm a biologist and a botanist, and um, I would feel terrible if a tree was taken out that didn't need to get taken out. Um, so I know I was very cautious. I know the arborist was very cautious, and we had very long discussions with him about each and every tree before they were removed. Monuments. Every monument that was in the park before we started is still in the park. We have talked to each and every individual who put one of those monuments there, talked to them about what the potential fate of those monuments will be. Next slide. We talked to the veterans about their monument and whether if it was going to get moved, what we would do. Most of the people we talked to said we would like to rededicate the flag if you move it to another location. We have agreed to that. We have their names. That will occur if and only if we need to relocate the monument. Next slide. Those are more of the monuments, and yes, we talked to those folks. Next one. The Utica Mine North Shaft Monument was temporarily removed because the uh, walnut tree was being taken down and we didn't want it damaged, but it was replaced back in its original position. The fountain, we spoke with the daughter of, of Isabel, and she um, is in agreement that if we have to relocate the fountain, we will take that plaque off and we will rededicate it at a new fountain. Next slide. Lastly, parking. Um, there's been some talk about putting parking, more parking at the park. Um, right now at the farmer's market, how many of you have been to the new farmer's market over the museum? It's probably a little easier to park there because there's 97 parking spaces. We have approximately 50 at the current park. So yes, we are looking at adding some parking, potentially on the side. The grant will not pay for parking. Um, so we will be having to use money from another source for that. We are looking at doing a two-level parking structure at um, so you can park on top where Napa and the adjacent parcel are, then come around to the back and park there. As is, if we remove the, the weeds and just gravel, and there's nothing that we don't know about once we remove the weeds, we would be able to estimate get approximately 26 more parking spaces just there. Next slide, please. Um, Calprans is also adding parking up top. They're going to restripe all of the parking on top, so they're actually parking spaces along the highway. They're putting in new sidewalks, so you'll be able to walk all the way along there on sidewalks. And we are reopening the original entrance to the park. There's those steps that used to be there. We're going to reopen those steps so that you can come in without having to walk down Sam's Way in order to get into the park um, and get run over while you're trying to do that. I was going to show you a working plan, but because of our geotechnical issues, we're still being held up. So next slide. So basically, what we have is what we have now. Um, we are hoping to, what, maybe in a month? have some sort of preliminary plan and be able to get our stakeholders together to start providing feedback on that. And with that, hopefully I've answered some of your questions. And if not, I'd be happy to answer any remaining questions that you have. Let's uh, maybe go ahead and have the public start asking. Do you want to start asking some of our questions and bring in? Okay, so at this time, I'd like to open it up for public comment and hear some of the public's questions. And then we'll gather those questions and then we'll have Amy come back up and address any concerns or questions that you make before we start to speak. Oh, my God. Oh, sorry, Lauren. Thank you for your. 
Um, you still need to know who I am. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Darby. Uh, my house is 1216 Bush Street, and I have not heard anybody addressing that they spoke to any homeowners along that Bush Street. Not one. I live in the there. creek that you talk to, that you talk to the businesses, you talk to whoever, but I did not hear any. Residential. Aaron, were you ever spoken? No, that was the only thing that I have to say is that it doesn't seem like you guys care much about us, the homeowner, the people do. that live right in that. This is affecting every day of our life. You talk every about day, where? no one has spoke to me. I live right across from the bathrooms on that big plan, old bathrooms that everybody hates so much. That's my house. <laughs> Nobody has spoke to me once. Not once. All the trees came down. They blocked us in. Oh, no, we don't have that access. Just, but you think you guys would know that? Because you have a map. You just the showed theater. it. I have not had anybody approach me or any of my children who own homes along there also about the noise level or how long the noise is going to go on. We live there. This is our home. We reside there. We are not tourists that come once a year for one day. We're there every day. This is our home. So I'd like to hear about that. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Harvey. Additional public comment. Claudia. Amanda Collinworth, um, 1090 Utica Lane. Um, I also um, have a conditional use permit for the mansion. And one question that I have is the ankle theater changes. Uh, with the requirements of the businesses having to attend to the noises, um, what's not being addressed is the noise travel um, going all the way up to Mount Point Road. Um, also, the concerns of the noise um, from that amphitheater directly in front of the homes, as Aaron had said. Um, I'm concerned about the relocation. I understand the geo um challenges. But flipping that to where the current park structure is located is not um, mm -hmm. not favorable to the homeowners on Utica Lane. Um, when they first started, um, the majority of the homeowners on Utica Lane were um, for a lot of these um, options, given that they were going to be towards the Cayman. Um, but now that those changes are going to be made, I don't know where and how you're going to read all that because um, I not only fully uh, business license for one of those homes, also having a father that lives there and my neighbor um, is a serious concern about how that's going to impact um, all of daily lives and the fact that travel. You know, the farming project on Friday night, you can hear the sound all the way up to my phone. So, um, and with the trees, I know that you're going to be planting the trees, but that is no longer there. And it's going to be years before that becomes another field very outbreak. Um, also, I have not been talked to by the city council or city staff related to any of the changes. And when they first got started, the biggest fire was the neighborhood. And so it's really disheartening to see that these changes are going ahead and not a single one of us have been um, talked to about it. Um, and it's really starting to, um, so we wouldn't be here tonight if we weren't unhappy with the way that this is moving forward. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, going with what Amanda said a little bit about uh, the changes of the design and have we figured out who's going to be on this committee? Why haven't we figured out who's going to be on the committee yet if we have designs going on? And how long will it keep changing until we figure out an actual plan? And if it's going to be a good one. That's it. Thank you. Trevor Lola, 1110 Suzanne Drive. Uh, 
I am probably less impacted uh, day to day than most of these people being in Celtic Park. Uh, I, my, my, I didn't say my role, but what I find myself doing a lot is trying to uh, talk to as many of you as I can, uh, people involved with the city, and then talking to them and trying to bring all those concerns into one message um, that then can be shared. I think there's a lot of lack of transparency with this project. And I don't mean that in, in a wrong way. Um, you know, I'm just saying there's a lot of questions. And the reason there's a lot of questions is there's not regular answers. Um, so, you know, something that I think would help or that I would like to see is maybe more regular public statements that can be shared on social media. Uh, maybe, you know, videos quarterly of here's updated progress. Here's what's going on. Here's what has happened with the snag we've hit. Um, you know, whether it be just you know a ten minute video from the city that can be shared on social media, um, a two page newsletter, something like that that can be shared. Because obviously, there's a lot more people in the city that are in this room that are not going to get this information, and then it would be helpful so that everybody knows what's going on, and there would be maybe less concern, less frustration about what the hell is going on with this project. Um, Another other thing I would like to see here is I did not see in any of this, and I know it's tangent upon more geological surveys, all those kind of things, but a timeline. Do we have any kind of idea of, you know, is there a timeline on the grant? Is there a deadline of when that money has to be spent and allocated? You know, is this going to be something that, you know, Aaron and everybody else has to deal with for two years, three years, or ten years? You know, how long is this going to happen that we, you know, it's hard for me as somebody who tries to advocate for the city as much as I can, especially to people that are maybe new to our city, to constantly say, well, here's the plan, it's gonna be really great, it's gonna, it's gonna be really good when it's done, but I can only do that for so long before I don't even know if it's gonna be great when it's done. I'm sure it will be when it's done, but that's a big question. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Pat Baumborn, Peter Kilvain. Um, the problem I have with the amphitheater is that um, it affects the whole town. It, the metal road goes in one place and the whole town is affected anyway. And I don't know what kind of structure that would be so harmful that would have to be put, put there and instead of be moved down, uh, down to the south instead of to the north of the park. Seems to me that the people are dodging, somebody's dodging making a decision, not here or me people. But these experts are supposed to know so much. If it was so bad, the whole mother load, as was explained, it would be in effect. And the house that I'm in is 150 years old. It had been down by now. If there's going to be a problem. So I just think something, somebody's exaggerating the problem and not. Facing to get asked to make hard decisions, nobody wants to make a decision uh, or really make a plan that seems like you could plow into the side of the hill somewhere and it could be dirt or rock. And I don't know what kind of structure, but they're afraid. Kishner had a plan to build office buildings there or something, and um, you know he he really ran out of money, and nobody said he could never do it. So anyway. I think that there needs to be some more, uh, you know, maybe a state geologist or somebody else come down. And, I don't know who's approving or not approving what it is, but I think like you know, kind of excuses blocking the whole process. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Any other public comment? And how about online? Do we have anyone hands that rose? TJ Good? Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> Oh, hi, thanks. This is uh, TJ Gallagher, 1100 Echo. I just, uh, just a quick thing about the Duck the Bureau on unabated all summer. And it was atrocious. I mean, I, I washed my car at 10 o'clock, and by noon it was thick of dust. Like, uh, 
and you never come into the fall season when uh, late summer and fall, where uh, Valley Deep is actually a real thing, and uh, that's uh, dust related. I just, you know, I'm just concerned about all the dust and lack of abatement from that. Not only from the project and the chipping and all that, and that's done, but it's still really dusty. And then where the trees in the park were taken out, you know, it wasn't watered all summer. I know they watered some trees and stuff, but that lot went uh, as a, a duck field basically for the whole entire summer. And it's been really brutal. So any kind of, uh, you know, abatement on that, you know, the folk will be a uh, really appreciated. I, I don't know. And that's, uh, oh, the other thing is, you know, secured level funding, funding as well, secured 100%, you know, the bank too. But, that's, that's basically it. But thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? Okay, we'll close public comment at this time. And Amy, if you can close with your I can't a recap of a lot of the yeah. things. Um, I wanted to clarify that was a consideration, the relocation of the amphitheater. It, it is not on a plan saying that that's where it's going to go. And if there was is no way to design it so that it would not be blaring um, music straight into the people who live there, it will not be located there. So that's that. Second, um, I so can, can I stop you just a minute? So can you please clarify? So the situation is that the geotech report has come back not favorable for the amphitheater to be in the valley, in the in the can in the canyon. We call it. tentatively, yes. Okay. So at this time, we're looking for reconsideration and options. Plan B, Plan C. Plan B, Plan C, Plan B. Okay. Plan. And the process is at at the time that you're arriving at what Plan B is and what Plan C is. What is the what is the public outreach, or is that just through the stakeholder group, or is that through city council? What is that plan? So that will be through the stakeholder group. Okay. Um, and basically, what we do is we first rely on the engineer and the builder to tell us where it physically can can go. What are our options? Give us something to start with where things can go, and then we meet with the stakeholder group. We've got to rearrange. Um, and I would strongly suggest that we have at least one member of a resident who lives there being on the stakeholder group. Um, we have, in fact, met with some of the residents. We did not personally go and talk to each and every one of them. We did our outreach community-wide and at the farmer's market. So if somebody did run into one of our booths, we did not go individually to any resident in the city. But we did meet with some individually. Um, we were concerned about how our um, tree removal was going. And we worked with them one-on-one, -on -one, and we went out and personally visited with them and asked what we could do to make things right for them. So just, okay. just for numbers, like to how, many homes, how many homes are right there alongside Utica Park? Is there eight? Is I was going to say I five. Just have, I was going to okay. say five. How many of those five would you say that you were in direct communication with? Two. Okay. I don't know. Well, two and a half. So, but we so we didn't reach out to the homeowners, and then it sounds like when we started construction, we also did not reach out. When we started vegetation clearing, no. What we did instead was we did uh, like, hey, we're getting ready to start on our website and social media. But we didn't actually go physically. We did not physically go. In and we're and we're going to improve that in yes. the future. I we're going to do door hangers notifications mm -hmm. for to put that on our contractor and, or whatever. Uh, sure. Ari, when you reached out to me and you asked me, did you, anyone reach out to you after that? They came. You came. But then my only request was that when they did take that tree, that I was notified and nobody notified. And that was, that was really cool. That made me feel like you guys were really cared. Yeah. <laughs> that really drove it home. And I knew that you had a, a baby there. Yeah. And so when I wasn't it. notified after that, that was yeah. weird. I, I apologize. So, I don't uh, know. That just talked, kind of yeah. I, I feel bad about that. I do apologize. And I reached talked. out to, and then nothing happened after that. It was kind of like a big. That's unfortunate. Hmm. And yeah. it wasn't because we didn't care. It was because we spoke. I mean, because I had another neighbor, too. And she was actually trapped in there while they Yes, I, I was at home. Okay. So, like, she had a newborn. Yeah. Yeah, I also have a child, but it was her I was actually concerned about, too. Yeah. Some of the people we did reach out to are looking forward to it as enhancing their property values. 
Um, so basically, when we did our design and outreach and conceptual plan, the idea was, okay, there's been a park there before. There's a certain level of disturbance that you're used to because there was a park. You're used to a certain level of noise. What can we do? What can we design that isn't going to cause that to increase significantly? We are still working at that level. And obviously, um, an amphitheater may not be able to go where it might be most convenient. Maybe we'll end up having to stick it somewhere else. Um, I think it's important to let them know why we have to have the amphitheater. Yes, yes. Because we have to have the amphitheater. It's part of the grant. It's part of the grant. And it's so part, of the, it. part of the economic development portion of this that benefits other parts of the town, and but not to the expense that we're going to have people having concerts at 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock. We have requirements on the farmer's market when it's there. They can't make noise after certain periods of time, just as Amanda knows on her permit when she has weddings there. We limit the amount of time she can have bands that are playing at the Utica Mansion. Same kind of requirements would be applied to the city for any kind of special event we would have. So we would be keeping those parameters the same. Um, communication certainly can be improved with the landowners who are right there. And as I said, obviously at least one that needs to be on our stakeholder committee, maybe two. Um, we have worked with, during the clearing, we were called out to the modular that's up on top. And we worked with that individual to show her exactly where we could put the fence, where we could plant oleanders to keep things screened from her house in the park. So we worked it out individually one-on-one -on -one with that person. Anyone with a concern, please feel free to call me. 209-743-2323 um, at any time. I'm happy to talk to you and uh, incorporate any concerns if you have any. Amy, so that just about closes that just about addresses all of the comments that were brought up. Trevor, did you? I just wanted to so just real quick on the, the geotechnical survey. Yes. Was it recommended? But that doesn't show we ruled that out completely, correct? Correct. Okay. So that right. that was one of my questions I have. But at this point we are going to close public comment and we're going to bring it back to council and, and we're going to start with Alvin and we're going to start asking our questions of Amy. Okay. Um, this will address part of Mr. Rollo's, I think 2025 is the deadline. Okay, thank you. Yeah, it's not uh, completely finished, correct? Technically, we have until 2028, I believe it's the actual deadline, but we do not anticipate that long. Once the geotech is nailed down, right. then you should expect things to go very quickly. Oh, I thought, okay, I was out of the way. I we have one start, so we have multiple deadlines. Okay. One for the per capita plan for the playground is 2024. Okay. Right. So that's sort of what's um, the tail is wagging the dog. That 2024 is making everything else. We're all trying to meet as much of that can get done by the end of summer in 2024 to meet that one grant deadline. As yeah. And then earlier you said when the, and I maybe I misunderstood too. The geotechnic, the first two didn't really want anything to do with it because we weren't at 12 or 15 million dollars. We we didn't have enough cash for them. So we were looking for a third one. We have a third one. But Condor was up there. So are we after another geotechnic? Yes. Yeah, so are we going after another one to see if there's a different one if you want it? So basically, Condor, at several of their geotechnical people left and formed their own company. And that is the company we are currently in touch with and are trying to hire. But it took until Friday of last week to get that resolved. Condor is too busy on their chicken run project to help us out with anything. Um, and the people before that read Condor's geotechnical report and saw our budget and said, man. Okay. So then, when you estimate the geotechnic, this, and, I mean, this is the final geotechnic that it's well, I, I hope it will be. I hope they'll be able to look at what Condor did and then tell us what Condor had already said initially, which was, you need to do some boards here, here, and here. Okay. Those get done, and then we have our final answer, and then we can go with our actual plan that we can start at least Stop putting the pieces. Throw some pieces on the board, start talking to people, and see what we need to rearrange. So, what's the timeline roughly on that? Four, three, or four spots, and get a report back on. You know, it's a wild guess on my part. Wild. 
if they have to do testing, less if they don't. And then, so we got 30 days for geotechnic, and then... No, then they're ready. They've already done a couple side plans for us, but because of geotechnical issues, they had to throw them away. Okay, so boy, you're just kind of sitting on a couple different yep. plans. Yeah. So within 30 days, yep. we should have another site. Does that sound with, about right? With, with the community group or what yeah. we're putting together. Yeah. So to the 30 days past that, we could probably have a map ready to go. Yes. Okay. That's our hope. Obviously, yeah, something blows so up. So there's more, but keep going. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I'd like to know where we stand, what we've spent so far, what we're projecting to spend um, in terms of timeline. Even if nothing happens, I would like to see that in every meeting. As I said, at that August 1st meeting, this is our biggest project and we owe it to the people and to, like I said, those that we represent. And I know, I think the comment last time was someone said that they didn't have kids. I don't have kids, but I'm not up here for me. I'm up here for everybody that I represent, which are all the constituents of the city. And having said that, um, we owe it to them to have that budget, to have that timeline, and I do expect to see that at every single meeting. And I expect to see it at the beginning of the meeting, so that way that those that are attending this don't have to wait until the very end, but they can call in, they can show up, they can get that update and move on. Because yes, Trevor, people don't know what's going on, and it's really sad and disheartening that people don't know, they should know. And they shouldn't have to come to a meeting to know that. So, that is it. Those are my questions. And actually, another one. The geotechnical report, um, so obviously there was one from 2007. We, remind me here. That was my question. What did that geotech report from 07 determine? It determined that approximately at least one acre of it should have been developable. It was the one that Mr. Kitchener did for his office buildings. It determined that he could put office buildings on the parcel that we bought. So can you kind of pinpoint where that yeah. one acre, what, just for my ignorance? Yeah, scroll, if you could scroll down. Oh, keep going, 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 keep going. I guess I'm not understanding where that okay. is in relation to the so, other site map. Here's the bottom of the pit. Here's our parking lot, where it ends right now. The circular. The, go all the way in. Okay, so here's the kitchen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. And here's the parking lot. Here's that. Here's the equipment that you see. Mm -hmm. So his buildings were all coming in here. So there's his buildings, and so they investigated this part and said, "Yep, you can build there. Here, we we would rather you avoid it unless we go do a whole bunch of core samples. Um, here, we'd rather you avoid it unless we go and do a whole bunch of core samples." We never anticipated putting anything up here because obviously it goes straight up. Okay, so based on that 2007 geotech re report, we can, we, at this date today, you're saying we cannot move forward with the amphitheater there. It has changed. I'm saying that the preliminary responses that we have received now indicate that, and we have to go with an engineer, a geotechnical engineer, that it may cost more than it's worth to go through and determine um, every square inch of this that may be buildable, that could be engineered, and they don't want to use a bundle budget in order to determine that. So what they're trying to do is find an economical way to test for where we can build with structures and where we cannot. And our understanding has always been that there is at least one acre of that that can have a structure. We have the ability to resize the amphitheater and make it smaller to fit an area yes. on that map. So it might be more like a stage and a couple rows. Yes. It doesn't need to be ironstone. Correct. Okay, so I definitely think that we need to to clarify that because I, I don't want to continue to spend money. How much money has been spent of the $3 million budget on reports. We, uh, we've been spending, I think, on reports. We purchased the property with it. So. Right, but you're saying that we've done another report that came back recently, no, not favorable. No, we haven't got anybody. No, Nobody with that. Yeah. No, plan. no one has gone in or done another report. All right. So these are initial engineer that are looking at the, that are looking at that. Not willing to. And that are saying, or don't have kids. Or don't have time. Okay. So it's trying to nail someone down who will take a minute to go through this, identify where we can do just some basic testing just for structural. And that's what's taken time. We're not, we haven't got any, like, the lawyer hasn't charged us anything. Because so, um, he's going to design and build. Right. Okay. 
The, so Condor has not come out with another no. report since 07, no. but we can't move forward with just this. This no. is not adequate. We need an engineer stamp. Yes. Okay. Why so. wasn't this getting done while we were waiting to do the pre <laughs> Because so we had to hire, because we were hiring the contractor, going through the RFP process and putting them under contract. But and once we did that, then they could start. So, the, but the contractor is not the geotechnical. Engineer. No, but they for the RFP were responsible for that. We think that responsible. So I, I think that's where my mind goes is that if we can get some clearance to put something structural on a section and we, we i understand we need to mark those boxes we need to build the amphitheater we need to bocce courts we need all the things that we're obligated to provide as part of our grant and i, I my mind is wondering you had said a couple times that maybe we choose a playground in a non-favorable area but I'm thinking, well, what's a playground way as opposed to a small down version of an amphitheater? I think that right. we need to, and, and I think that's what the public is looking for. And I'm not qualified to answer that question, right. not this, unless, except for an engineer, <laughs> um, is qualified to answer that question and having looked at it. Okay. So this is speculative. Okay, so then timeline that Alvin was touching on was about 30 days, hopefully, for. Geotech. Some geotech commitment, and then another 30 days for the lawyer to put a plan down. A draft um, plan to be reviewed by the Do you think it would be, I think it would be fair and reasonable to start the process of establishing your stakeholders and yes. your outreach. Which we have we, already done. Yes. I feel that we, a, a lot like what Isabel said, I, I feel that we failed miserably on outreach for community outreach and public, public um, outreach on this project. Otherwise, we wouldn't have been hearing so much of that tonight and over the last several months. So everyone sees the trees go down and they think, oh, great, you know, the, the anticipation and the ex expectation is that we were going to start construction right away. And it wasn't the case for all these reasons, um, which just didn't help things publicly. So I definitely think we need to do better with public outreach uh, this time around. Um, quickly, I know the answer, but can you please... Can you explain back on the site plan, Rose, can you back on like page three or whatever it was? Can you clarify the disadvantaged community comment on the map? Yes, it is actually a term used by the state of California that identifies income levels that are less than 80% of median income. And that's typical for a grant application. It is for, typical I, for that they want you to yeah. include disadvantage. This is not a homeless encampment. There was a yeah. lot of talk. This is online. basically just the neighborhood on the other side of the highway. Honestly, it yeah. happens to be the way they draw things because you'll notice that's the highway. It was convenient for them to draw the line at the highway. Is that uh, actually uh, exactly where the 80% median income levels are? No, it's not. Oh, it's, 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 like more the, no, it's, it's not ind indicative of the neighborhood. But no, no, no. Listen, yeah. it's a new yeah. I understand they pick it no, here. No, and so it, it's nothing that's being designed to be no, that no, way. No, no, it's no. a it's for that. grant funding. Well, well, that was a question. How big is the sample the theater supposed to be? What are you trying to It will be as big as we can fit on there. But but if you got a match of parking with an amphitheater. Correct. The children's playground is mm -hmm. so small. So right to an amphitheater you don't know what to play with every day. That's why we need the site plan in order to know how much parking for sure would be most appropriate. And we will know the size of the amphitheater we can have once we know the geotech. Chicken and egg, we need to know that geotech in order to do the size of the amphitheater. In order to determine. <laughs> okay, guys, we're like, once again public comments closed. So we have a couple other council members. I still have some more questions, but go ahead, Carolyn. No, You're okay. right. No, Joy, I'm trying to. Uh, one of the Agreed. comments online was about funding secured, and yes, we do have funding secured, so I think that's important to let people know. Um, I, too, have my notes here about the amphitheater. Um, can it just be simplified to yes. meet the needs of the grant, but just be simple enough that we could put it in the canyon so that it's not really Again. interfering with people, and I know about the size and the engineers. Yeah. Um, but uh it just does I'm, I'm not thinking like hollywood bowl kind of size sure. um and then um the plan b regarding the geotech so if we can't secure the this offshoot company from condor what's our plan c to find one <laughs> okay 
Yeah, because I think it, you know, obviously the community is getting antsy and like um, we, we need to be moving on this. On and, this. and we understand that, yeah. however, we do not want something that is not safe. Yeah, as far as the timeline, I, I do kind of, I, I get both Isabel and Councilmember Makata's and, and the challenges of not having that, but also we don't have a plan yet to put into place. So I guess the timeline I'm looking for would be maybe just this immediate stuff that so that we can put that out there and let people know. Yeah, I mean, I think we've, and just that we haven't really spent anything on the grant so far, so. We have, we have purchased the property. Well, there's that, yeah. Yeah. The but as far as like contracts and, and things. And we have the, um, and then the, 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 the clean yeah. Um, and then uh, communication, I agree wholeheartedly with the entire um, council on that. We definitely uh, need to do better, especially with those folks who are gonna be in this construction zone and letting them know when certain things are happening. Uh, we are planning a dedicated page, I believe, on our website. We have a dedicated page. Um, we also just uh, contracted for a VR uh, through our utility billing system. So the nice part is everyone who lives in the city is also a utility customer, whether yeah. it's water and sewer, or water or sewer. Um, so now we will actually be able to um, get kind of by area everyone who is in there. Um, so we will be able to do that outreach. Um, Amy and I also sat through a demo with um, Esri. Um, that's a big hole that we have at the city. We just do not have access to GIS. And so um, we would be able to, again, utilize that um, as a way to kind of, similar to what we need to do with um, when there's a planning you know, change around. around. Yeah. yeah. So that would give us the ability to identify who was all there and then do the outreach that way as well. So I mean we we looked at different ways that we could be better at, at doing outreach. Um I think old fashioned paper for at least the people who are affected by construction, because right. some of them might be renters and they're not going to see the water bill. Well, well, I, it's going to go to a home, the homeowner instead. So, so our access, exactly, well, that you made it really important. Um, we always have access to the owner right. and their information. We do not always know. Exactly. So just, I think, just for that area too, it's just important to make sure that they're not landlocked um, for, you know, 24 hours. So I think that's it for my... Uh, yeah, track. and then in terms of outreach, um, we have a functioning website now. We issue press releases. We have um, a Facebook uh, presence, which we didn't have before. Mm -hmm. We now have a city newsletter that went out for the first time. Um, you know, and then kind of working with Public Works. Um, you know, that's something that I've had a conversation with staff as well. Is you know, right now they're currently going door to door reading meters. Um, sometimes we might be able to give us on that effort to drop additional information off. Second so, door meter. Can we also ask? I know that this, I know the trees were abrupt, and it was it was it was a lot to see the trees. We all have stated the trees, but in the meantime, the park is in disarray. So everything that otherwise could be alive and, and vegetated is is looking dead and, and not looking watered down. I think. I mean, so we can we also water the trees. So can we also make an effort to try to clean the park up as best and then in the in the right of way? I think that everything looks a little bit abandoned and abused, uh, even though it is in construction. So I think I definitely think that. We need to put our effort with our, our public parks department in our right of way and cleaning. I mean, I know it's construction and construction is always a lot to deal with, but it could look a lot better than it does. Both with some water and some cleaning and sweeping and, and pruning back what we have. Uh, in, in addition to like cleaning. We, we just pruned everything. So actually part of the arborist report so to actually go and finish training the trees. We did do that. Um, we are watering the trees um, because there was no irrigation out there. When when they were pulled out, the irrigation lines were broken. Um, so part of the plan is also to put new irrigation throughout the park. That's part of the construction project as well as landscaping. So there's a there's a limitation on what we can do um, without spending money putting in a new irrigation system. That's 
Um, but we do um, bring the hydro washer out. And we are regularly doing those trays. We put that fencing up to try to keep people out. And they bring them back down. down. Yeah. And what about by the guardrail? There's quite a bit of weeds that are just up and, you know, they're real quick to notify people they got to clean up their land, but we, it, it seems like we can care less about our weeds we go back. On the guardrail, there's quite a bit of weeds, as well as on Booster Way over that way. Sam's Way, too. You can't hardly well see around the corner. As Sorry. well as, yeah, I, I think all right away, but mainly on the highway. Like, even the new sidewalk across from uh, U.S. Bank. And so the construction so area, those stakes can be removed and the weeds can be pulled. We can just try to make it, I know it's construction and it's not easy, but to make it look uh, as good as possible. And I actually just want to ask, so old fashioned copier, we can't just print some copies and leave those at people's doors that live on the vehicle lane, like we do in yes. the businesses. We can, that's why we say, we can do it. You just said sometimes, or so I wanted to just be sure that we will do that. So can I do one thing? Um, when you step back, there was a picture of my brother when he actually had a black beard. Oh, <laughs> that I think was the farmer. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, oh, he's only got the two gray streaks. He's only got one. Yeah. You take a picture. Oh, right. Can you send out in that photo? Yeah. <laughs> so my only thing is, and I do apologize, is there has not been that like, great outreach, and and people's feelings are hurt. That's that's not acceptable for the whole night time. But we, I was part of this fire on Sunday with my brother and everybody else. There's been outreach since 2019 or prior on all this. There's been the community club. There's been the grant, the whole formation of it. This has been ongoing for years. And this is amazing out here. This is the first time I've seen this group here in this many numbers. It's awesome. Come to these things. Be careful of social media. Social media can get like a whole yeah. hornet's nest stirred up in a heartbeat. Um, but the get involved, the and get involved. Please, please become yes. involved. Get involved. Well, join yes. that community club with Jeremy Leonard, Jeremy Wood, John Brolio. Get your voice in there and be heard. So that's all I can. Yeah, and to piggyback on that, that's why I'm so adamant about wanting the information of a projected timeline. It doesn't, you know, a draft. What is it? Gantt charts are constantly changing. Um, of getting that out there so that way that people have a place to go to see this information. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. And I do think, Trevor, I've seen you on social media try to be the middleman and be the voice of reason a lot when people are kind of on a, on a rampage. I want to thank you for that because you've tried. Um, one thing that we'll say again, we've said in the last few meetings, the majority of us up here, we choose not to engage in social media because we are bound by rules of the Brown Act and such. So we really can't engage in that platform. This is our platform. This is how we can and this is how we will, but please um, do what you can to share what we do post formally and officially on social media. Some of the other pages out there, we don't, uh, we don't, we don't have any, any uh, official uh, threshold over. So um, thank you for that. And Amy, this research or the, the history and the backstory was really helpful tonight. I think to a lot of people because 2019 was great outreach. I do think we've we've missed the construction outreach. And, I, and we're going to do better on that. And faith, I'm quite. Happy and, you. and just just to put it out there, I I've worked on projects like this before. Um, this is not unusual. Um, it, it's like remodeling your kitchen, and you just you're ready to go nuts after a while. Um, worked on the park in Oakdale. Uh, similar kind of response when they first saw how things were changing. But when it's done. Uh, we hope it will be something you'll be proud of and have uh, taken part in and we look forward to working with you all. And feel free to reach out to any of us. Our emails are all on the website. You know, I know I see a lot of you out in town, so if you have questions about it, you know, pull me aside and ask if happy to or any of us are happy to answer questions. If we don't have an answer, we'll get back to you. Thank you. Okay, so having said that, I'd like to have a, a small break. Sam, if you can turn the camera off, maybe just a five minute bio break, and then we'll come back for item B. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, we will resume the uh, city council meeting. Thank you for your patience. Um, we're going to return with the regular agenda, item 8B, and that is to approve resolution 2369 for a community resilient grant center grant that also and then authorized the mayor to sign the letter of a commitment with minor changes rebecca 
Oh, sorry, Amy. <laughs> Uh, Mayor and Council Members, this is for a Community Resilience Center grant. We were looking at doing a rehabilitation of City Hall and expanding it to include an area where there could be a meeting facility, perhaps um, emergency response. We have met with Sierra Hope and we have met with Common Ground. The idea being that we could have social services there as well as emergency operations there as well as City Hall there. Um, have meeting rooms that we we wouldn't always have to meet in the um, fire station uh, for City Hall. We could have a senior center by day, and City Hall City Council chambers at night. Um, meetings for other people as well as we have a fairly unique greenhouse gas emissions reduction plan that will be coming before you. It has some fairly unique programs that talk about training. Um, youth, um, adults in a classroom setting, and we've talked to potential partners about being able to do that, the idea of being taking biomass, for example, and converting it into some sort of fuel. Um, and that's something that if we can put all that together in this kind of a center, they do ask for both a resolution and a letter of commitment. Not quite sure why they need both, but that's what's before you, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Questions? Okay, seeing no questions up here. Any members of the public have any questions or comments? Um, Rose, I'll let you know if you see anybody online. No. Okay, bringing it back to council, I'm looking for a motion for resolution 2369. I'll make the motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. You. Item 8C. This is to adopt resolution 2368, which is approving an agreement between the City of Angels and the Department of Forestry and Fire Protection for the Volunteer Fire Capacity Grant. Nathan Pratt. Oh, you're not Nathan Pratt. Well, 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 <laughs> 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 oh, I'm reading the agenda on yeah. here. Just saying. Yeah. Sorry. So back in, in April, we applied for the volunteer fire capacity grant for 10 items of needed replacement. Uh, beginning of August, we received notification that they approved seven of the 10 items. So um, it is a 50-50 grant. So we got approved for a total of $8,371.50. So by like seven items, I will tell you what they are. Uh, while in firefighting gloves, while in no expense, uh, while in fire shelters, um, structural firefighting gloves, firefighting flash hoods, and three sets of turnout, structural turnout gear. Uh, we would like to go ahead and, and make these purchases and we would like to use the Cal Fire money for our portion. Okay. Questions or comments from Council? Uh, the only question I got is I'm assuming we have $8,371.50 in the Stride Capital Improvement, and that can go to that 100% no problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there we go. Yeah. Over hundred thousand. <laughs> Anybody else? Well, the go bigger mark. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Ten thousand dollars for a percent. <laughs> That's the maximum you get. Okay, public comment on this item. Seeing no public comment, knowing that we have the funding, I will be looking for a motion. So moved. Second, Second. Uh, Isabel. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Item 8D, this is to adopt resolution 2341, authorizing the industrial disability retirement of police officer Stephen Sanford. Right. We originally brought this item to you back in April, um, and you, at that time you did approve the resolution. However, HealthFirst is very um, particular on how the resolution needs to be written, and um, 
They also need to know if we're going to um, provide the advanced disability prepayment option. So we, in the last resolution, we didn't have that. Um, so we included it in this resolution along with some language cleanup that first requested so we can hopefully get this process moved forward. So this is just specific. It's a revised resolution. Mm -hmm. okay. yep. cool. Questions, anybody? <clears throat> public comment? Seeing no public comment, we'll bring this item back for the motion. I'll make a motion for resolution 2341. I'll second that motion, Rev. All in, or, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, next item is 8E. That is the adoption of resolution 2371 approving HRA, which is health reimbursement arrangement, plan change for administrative cost and resolution 2372 termination of the HRA. Okay, so um, we have a health reimbursement arrangement uh, that was approved uh, in 2014. Um, the city provides some level of health insurance contribution towards retiree health. Um, depending on when you retire, it could be quite significant, um, all the way down to we are only going to pay for the time of somewhere in between. So depending on when you retire, whichever MOU you, uh, you were represented by, that determines the level of benefit. Back in 2013, it was um, brought to city council to create this health reimbursement arrangement, which I'm not against them. Um, they make a lot of sense when you are um, trying to build up, um, when, you're, when you're trying to create um, basically retiree health plan contributions to an individual as say a benefit that would potentially maybe be portable. So you'll see these happening a lot nowadays with agencies eliminating retiring health in lieu for um, contributions towards an HRA. And then if that employee um, if that employee retires from the agency or they you know quit and go somewhere else, they can take that's that's their benefit. It just lives with them for a period of eternity. But when you do that, it doesn't create any future obligation to the agency. What this is, is this was a way to contribute to this plan. And then the plan would then just cut a check to the retiree mm -hmm. every month. So um, it's not like it was, there wasn't really a, a, a like, really good reason to do this other than it took the administrative burden off of staff. But at the end of the day, we have 10 retirees that get checks cut to them. And we're paying $1,300 a year to have Mid-America do it. And there's $15,000 sent into the account. So, you know, the level of administration is very small. Um, prior to 2013, the city cut the checks to the retirees. Um, from 2013 to present, uh, Mid-America has, which we have gotten caught in the middle several times where the retiree is contacting us because they didn't get their checks or they, you know, whatever the issue is. So it, it's it's just created a kind of probably a lot more administrative burden with us not taking care of it than what we benefited from it and how doing. So at this point, the recommendation is to go ahead and change the current plan so that we can actually pay for the administrative costs um, out of the proceeds that are in there because it's been in earning interest on the pre-advance that we gave it. And then since so 2013, it just keeps earning interest and just sits there in the trust. So we can actually um, have administrative charges for in America just paid for directly out of the trust. Um, and then once it, um, once it zeroes out, then we can go ahead and terminate it. You can't close these until they're zero. 
So it's not like we can say Mid America, just send us the money. We'll take it from now and we'll cut, cut the retirees' checks. It has to be zeroed out at the plant level first. So we just would cease contributing any more money to Mid America. They would continue to cut the checks to the retirees. They would pay for the administrative charges out of the balance that's there. And then once it's zero, then we would enforce the termination and then we would take over making payments to the retirees directly. So that, that's all this is. Um, it saves us money in the long run because we have $15,000 sitting there and we keep contributing money to it. So there's always this like hanging $15,000 balance that's there year over year over year. Um, it saves us from having to pay this administrative cost, which is about $1,300 every year um because we would have to do that um and the only changes that happen on an annual basis is PEMPA changes um, it's based on a cost of living increase so every year uh calipers will increase that PEMPA by two percent but that's it question uh how long do you think it's going to take to 10 years no no it to take close it out to close it out um you know maybe like next May, I think. I mean, it's not that. Sorry, it won't take us very We're making the payments to yeah. the in, the ten individuals, two out of that, correct? And the administrative fee. Like, yeah. Two more quarters, yeah. maybe. Two more quarters. Uh -huh. Yeah. But we'll know exactly when we need to start cutting the check direct. Yeah. With, yeah. They're not going to. Yeah. I'm not going to ever go without them. No. So once this once this gets passed, um, then I'll communicate with them tomorrow. They will give us a census report of the retirees and the current information that they have for them. So we'll be able to have all of that addressing information and contact information, which then we will reach out to all of those retirees just to say, we're going to change it. So your checks, you know, starting in, and we'll just have to look at exactly what month that's going to be, will be coming from the City of Angels instead of from Mid America. Public comment. Seeing no public comment, looking for a motion. There's to two resolutions. Modify 2371 and terminate with 2372, the two resolutions. On the So second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah. Taking us to item 8F. <laughs> This is discussion and recommended upholding discussion and recommendation regarding the Medbury APN 0640043 code compliance and upholding the notice and order to abate with an extension. Rebecca. Okay, so at the last meeting, um, Mr. Medbury came to public comment as well as several of the neighbors um, with, with regards to Mr. Medbury's um, issue. Um, so basically this staff report is just a history of uh, how we got to this point um, and also the specific um, uh, uh, municipal codes and health and safety codes that code compliance identified as um, being the violations. Um, we have done, and this is not just with Mr. Metbury, this is with all the co compliance. We have really tried to do a soft camp with everyone, to try to get as much self compliance as possible. Um, the, the idea is to, uh, as much as possible, not go to the administrative part just because um, it's, it's lengthy. Uh, that's where it's a lot more expensive to go through that process. And certainly we would prefer um, self-compliance um, than having to go to the point where we basically abate something ourselves and then slap away on the property. Um, that's not that's not ideal. So we've worked um, for a very long time with Mr. Ben Berry on this particular issue. It originally came to us as a complaint. Um, we are a complaint-driven uh, code compliance city. Um, so we received complaints that someone was living in a, in a trailer out there. Um, we contacted him and got information in terms of, you know, kind of what his story was. Um, at the time that he, uh, that we approached him, he didn't have a building permit and he had a coal permit. 
Um, so we've been working with him quite significantly to try to get him in compliance just in terms of having a building permit. Um, but that has that has been part. Um, the uh, the code compliance officer ultimately issued um, um, a notice of order um, on August 16th, and the compliance date was September 18th of 2023. Our recommendation, just because um, we're working with legal counsel to get additional information in terms of what the next steps are um, and what options we have out there, um, would come to us um, until we could bring that to you at the next meeting, which would be on the 19th. 19th. Right. So because of that, that's the day after he would have to apply. So our recommendation is to push the um, that enforce that code date, compliance date, off to the end of the month. Um, that way you've got additional information in terms of what um, legal uh, requirements you have. Um, in order to move forward with any sort of enforcement measure. Um, and, you know, I think we've been trying to um, work with planning to identify some additional temporary um, options that we could have. Uh, Mr. Medbury did ask if he could have his uh, trailer just be considered a, a construction trailer. Um, but even with that, you know, what we've been looking at is a commercial construction trailer. Um, so I'm not sure if it would fit within there either, but we haven't brought that forward um, yet as well. So um, we have actually a lot of complaints about people sleeping in uh, trailers, uh, whether that's on public or private property. Um, that tends to be um, a complaint that we get on a regular basis. Um, so I just want to bring you know your memory back to what Irma said. One of her presentations here was we can't do subjective enforcement. So if we are going to enforce on one, we have to enforce on all. If we're not going to enforce on one, then we don't enforce on any. So just bear that in mind that um, that is a that is an issue that we have. This is not uncommon. This is not uncommon that we come across, but we enforce every single one of them that comes comes along uh, because it does violate health and safety. There is not uh, legal access in most cases to uh, water, sewer, power. Um, and so those are the biggest state health and safety issues that um, that we would you know that we would tie to. And then we listed off all of the other violations. And these are directly out of our municipal code. Um, so we've um, continued to try to work with Mr. Medbury. Um, my recommendation also is that before the September 19th meeting, um, we would ask that we get documentation that a purchase um, or um, information that demonstrates that um, the manufactured home that Mr. Medbury is is purchasing at least we can show a production date on it um so we can see production scheduling uh all the comments that need to be responded to for csg because there's still comments outstanding from them um, in terms of plan review uh and uh our building inspector was also in communication with the designer and he's being called up because of those comments as well we do need engineered and or professional um review and sign off on solar plans with proper calculations. We need fire sprinkler plans, we need site plans, and we need payment of sewer fees and payment of mitigation fees because both of those have not happened. Um, so I think that effort being presented to the city council at the meeting on September 19th gives you a good idea in terms of if progress is sufficient to continue to have additional conversation about it. So I do have a quick question. You just mentioned things that need to happen um, to get on track. Are those in addition to the five items, which is remove the recreation trailer, stop all non-permitted land, land use, stop? Yes, because these stop. are code compliance issues. So the, I'm just saying on the building permit right, side, right. we're okay. hung up on the building permit side, totally separate from code compliance side. 
Yeah, but I think part of the argument is if you let them stay there, you know, I can keep working, but we're not seeing the amount of progress that needs to happen on the building permit side. So, um, you know, I, I think that's my that's my concern is we're not seeing real progress on the other side. One of the violations is 1706-10, restrictions on building construction land use. It says no building and structure or land shall commence unless it is permitted in the zone which the land is located. Is there a zoning issue with this property or that's just a violation for, it's, it's not zoned for this use? It, it's that you can't build onto an existing structure. Um, yeah, so so what what code compliance is seeing when they go out there is they'll see a, another structure mm -hmm. that they didn't notice the last time they went out there. Okay, so an alteration. So uh, we just need building to stop completely until we have a building permit site plan. The things that need to be in in the building department's hands and reviewed and signed off on should happen before you continue to do any site work, any building, any construction of any kind. And so you're saying as of today, where is he, where is he at with the building permit and in anticipation for having a uh, modular come in December or before December, is that possible with this timeline? I don't know because as of Friday, this is where it was. Still, no site plan. Um, still, no comments responded to. Uh, you know the kind of the list of things that are in here. They're still all outstanding. First thing. Um. Somebody else go first because I got right now the few ones. Or I'm thinking. I think my question is where are we at? Um, I, I do wonder if Mr. Medbury is either building a home or purchasing a manufactured home. I, I thought I had, I thought I was under the impression that he was building. So maybe, maybe that would all come with the building permit. And then the next steps for moving forward. How can we keep getting back on the track? So I'm happy to explain if you want. So I think at this time I will open public comment and maybe Mr. Medbury can take the are you going to give them five minutes only or an additional? Um, let's see how long it takes. I okay. think if you need some more time, this would be appropriate. Okay. I'll thank you. I'll start the timer anyway. I'm not going to talk very much. I'm just, um, my name is Mike Mayberry. I'm from the 1840 Finnegan Lane. Um, I've got um, a proposal for building place, and I've gotten, I've got all the money paid to the uh, the builder, uh, the uh, person that's putting together the building, and I've gotten uh, one uh, bunch of comments on the first time I submitted my proposal, and uh, the uh, uh, PMHA submitted the proposal, and so this is in process. It's pretty far along in process, and I've gotten um more information that's been given to phmi because they're going to be the lead on it and they'll give it back to me and that should be within this week and uh, i will carry it on my hands to the uh, uh, building inspector and i just hope that it will go somewhere so are you building or did you order? Pardon? Uh, just want clarification on Dan's question. Did you, are you building a home? So I think your letters said something about 600 square foot. Yes. But then is that a manufactured? It's manufactured and they're going to uh, deliver to me on a uh, 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 trailer. Uh, some come like a flatbed? Pardon? Like a flatbed truck? Yeah, like a flatbed. And then I'll put them up. They'll, so, so think of it like a kid house. It's, 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 not, it's, not, it's, not a it's not a modular home that has sheetrock yeah, lights right. and you just stitch them together. You, you still no, have it's a sheet. It's that uh, the walls will come with, you know, this sheeting and uh, the, the uh, uh, 
Raptor is going to be built. Right. And I'll set them up, and then you know we'll sheet the wood room. It'll be really quick. Right. You still have to do, you still have to do plumbing, electrical, insulation, right. um, uh, sheetrock, paint, tape, texture, flooring, appliances, all right. that stuff. Still. Yes. Okay. And I've got bids on several of those. So you you just got the frame. You have the shell. It'll be enclosed. Yes. Okay. Sorry. No, I was just saying, so it's the shell, basically. Yep. Okay. okay, I have a question. So do you do you have a clear understanding of the the communication from city staff about the the violations and the and the things that are missing and the things that are wanted? Is it do you have an understanding? Well, I understand it. Okay. I don't agree with it. I think it was premature. And it was inappropriate, terribly inappropriate, uh, because I've been working to clean up this, eight, you know, one and a half acres, uh, one point six acres. I've done nothing but clean it up, and all the uh, people who are coming and just vagrants that would come there, and you know, I tried to uh, give them the impression that, you know, you need to go. And that's been supporting, I've had support from a lot of other people and exactly that. Uh, so yes, I, I've heard the same exact thing that, that you have been a major help down there. Um, but at this point, you, like, you're well, right? You state in the letter, there's, there's a hand dug well. No, 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 no. What, no, was, no. It, what was that? The well is, was uh, dug several years ago. It was drilled, so it's it's producing, and I actually using the water. It's um, um, I've got a report on it. I got two reports. And you turn those in, and everything's satisfactory. Well, you and know, I'm, I'm giving it to PHMI, and they have to give me the information because they're trying to get the uh, the the whole circumstance approved. I mean, it's, it's really complicated. Man. Well, and, and how, how are you pumping that water? Is, is, is your is electrical panel done there? Is it all on solar? It's on solar. off the generator? It's on solar. It, so it's not a, it's not a, so it, it is solar. Solar. Uh, just a couple of solar panels and a battery that you've installed, or you've had a, a, an electrical company come and install it a solar? It pumps it up to a tank, 2,500 gallons, and then it will come down hill to my house. So that is, that's the way it's operating today? Yes. Okay. And then sewer, you still don't have a sewer connection, correct? That's right. And it's been really difficult to work with the city to get their um, approval of something. You know, I'm just, I've tried to get the uh, sewage connection defined. And there was one that um, um, somebody had lived there before me and they had a sewage connection, and uh, that was, you know, just was pretty much done. But their, their house burned up, right. and so I'm trying to figure out if that's still appropriate for me to get to it, or if there was another one that would be straight downhill that would be more appropriate. And I haven't gotten any response. And, and we so. can get there, the sewer feeds me. And, and we still can't permit the trailer to connect to the sewer. Pardon? You still cannot uh, permit your trailer to connect to the sewer. No, I don't want to. Right. But sewer, the sewer fees need to be paid. The mitigation fees still need to be paid. So. Okay. We'll lay on me. So, and are you going to hook up the pg &E, or are you going completely off-grid solar? Off-grid. You're going completely off-grid. Because okay. pg &E, uh gave me a, a bid for, well, not a bid, but a suggested that I would have to pay about eight three thousand dollars. Oh yeah. And so, I figured that, so it's a solar permit. So is this as I say it's a solar permit it's a yeah. solar permitted and you're gonna have to do battery batteries I've got generators. Batteries. Yes I've got batteries that's all on the side. And that all has to be inspected still too. Um, and in, in your letter you said in the because I'm looking at it right now and I do appreciate the letter and it is a pretty piece of property. I've, I've seen it. It is. Um, you know, you hope to be living in my house before deep winter descends. I just don't know. We're already mid-September, October, no and November. We're only a couple months out. And I know. We don't even have sewer connection. You don't have power there yet. I'm, I'm you, don't have the, you don't have a site plan done. 
Correct. I have a site plan. I've got three versions of it, and it's so as just a, I'm as waiting. A, as, a Friday, we don't, as a Friday, when I talked to the staff, we still do not have engineer um, solar electric fans. As a Friday, we still don't have a final site plan for you. You, you should have Friday. site plan and uh, the sprinkler deal. I've gotten that engineered, and there's one other thing was can't remember what else. But there's there's been a lot of work done, and it it doesn't show. Uh, and what you have done to respond to me, and you know we, I'm sending this out to consultants, and the consultants are talking with the city, I assume. And then I have to go back to the consultant, and it would be nicer to just go to the city immediately, but I think that's where we're at. So the consultants are the ones that we've asked you to work with. Pardon? The consultants are the ones we've asked you to work with directly because, you know, PHMI needs all of those pieces of information in order to be able to to get the fire sprinkler plans um, in order to get the things that we were asking for. Um, you needed to have the well tested because the fire yeah. flows are dependent on, on what that says. But again, that information has to go to PHMI in order for them to draft what the fire sprinkler plans are. I gave it to Amy months ago. But we're also I've also given it to PHMI, and that's going to come to me because they want me to deliver this. And so I'm waiting for them to respond. Correct. I know. <laughs> so it's it's not the it's not the city's not been dragging their feet on any of this. We have what responded. About the sewer? Pay your sewer fees. What is? You got the bill when you originally paid part of your fees. So I can have I... Caitlin give another copy to you, but all the fees have to be paid. If if anyone came in the door to the building and planning department and they said, I want to build X, we would give them the list of fees that they need to pay. They would pay it and we would move forward. I paid a significant amount of money and I thought that that was going to at least get some of this on track and it didn't. It paid for, if you paid your plan review fees and your building permit fees as a start, but there's still additional fees that need to be paid and you're asking us to send staff out there to start looking at sewer infrastructure, but those fees have not been paid for sewer. Well, that's news to me. It's a conversation we've had multiple times, but that's okay. No, that's not exactly the way I'm saying it. So I will follow up with um, our building inspector yeah. again, but my question is, can you provide all this information before the September 19th meeting? I think I can. The one thing that's going to be really tough for me to do is to get the solar uh, engineering for the solar. But I'll try and get that. And I guess that's my concern. Is so so. So Council Member Rolio just asked you if you have power, and you said yes, I have. Power. Mm -hmm. But isn't that power what you produced there yourself? The solar power is what I got. Right. right. It's not been engineered. It has been engineered. It, the uh, company that designed the solar were all engineers, and they gave me a report on the engineering, and what I got, they were astounded that that was not acceptable because it was really a lot of work that they did. I will say I'm getting a completely different story from, from the building that's yeah. So for me, I, so, go ahead. Yeah, so I think, I think probably what needs to happen is a, re, a regroup um, with, with your staff and then with Mr. Medbury, maybe with an accounting of fees that are paid and what's left, I mean, it, 
it's kind of out of our thresh, our realm here. We don't know. We don't know. Yeah. So I think that maybe just an effort of having a meeting and a sit down and clear understanding. That's kind of why I asked you, do you have an understanding of the next steps and the requirements? Because it, it there's a disconnect somewhere and I'm not sure where it's at. But if it's a matter of a couple of fees, I, I, I'm confused. Is there a way to provide a checklist that's we, specific? We have, yeah. So yeah, that's 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 well, I mean, yeah. I mean, you have to have water, you have to have sewer, and you have to have power. And, and, and we have to know when this home is coming. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, right now you said you have three different site plans. You have to narrow it down to one because how do you well, approve? You know what I mean? So there's, I think there's a lot of legwork that, that still has to be done. Um, and it's got to be done like tomorrow um, because we, we have been working on this for a little time, I believe. Right. And, I, and I do want to work with you, but there's there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff that's got to be done still too. Well, you know, they haven't seen what I've done. So I've done a lot of that work. It's just not there yet. It's not from PHMI to me so I can give it to you. So typically, that seems a little out of order to me. Like, typically, the plans would come first so that when the work begins and then the inspections happen, the inspections are validating that the work is consistent with plans. But you're kind of almost putting the cart before the horse and, and doing the work and experiencing the power or experiencing the living condition without inspections or plans. So I, I think that's the overall concern that I'm reading is that we don't have an ordinance. It is in violation of our city ordinance to be living on a construction site in a temporary trailer. And for me personally, as much as I, I think you're a wonderful person and a member of our community and I appreciate what your, your love and ambitions are, if we start allowing people to live in trailers on vacant lots in the city limits, we will have a problem like there is no tomorrow. So it is one of my personal code enforcement um, taboos. Um, and, and so I really want to see you with success and I want to see you move forward. I think we can get there, but I, I think you really need to listen to what the list of requirements are, unfortunately. And are we making a recommendation tonight? Are we no, do you need the extension down to the top? All I'm right. asking is that you guys give an extension to the end of the month. I'll make a motion to extend it to September 29th. Um, but I say choose the time wisely. Yeah. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. So wait a second. I'll step. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Administration report. Um, I met with Congressman Lickmanzak today. Um, we went on a tour of the park, not the whole system, but part of the unit that he's done. Um, we discussed for uh, advanced hardening and reducing regulatory obstacles for the projects that we have specific to that. Um, we had an RFP out for the rate study consultant and the CBDG consultant, both of those closed. Um, so we'll all be forming review panels and then three recommendations to the council on both of those. Um, you got good students. Um, the first, oh, sorry, the first city newsletter went out. Um, so prior to that, I had uh, out on social media and on a website um, for people to sign up for it. We had a total of 46. Um, People that signed up for it. Um, 30 opened the newsletter, 8 clicked on the links within the newsletter, which was just more information. Um, and then I did another social media push just to say, hey, did you miss did you miss our first newsletter? Make sure you sign up. So now as of today, we have 95 months. Okay. So, so the next one that goes out um, will be able to get more people. Um, so we're using constant um, contact and the um, the nice part is between using constant contact and Canva, um, we can put together a pretty decent quickie newsletter uh, that's got a lot of uh, helpful information on it. Um, and also working with UPUD, um, when we changed uh, from council sitting on the um, IRWMA to staff sitting sitting on there 
it made a lot more sense because we're closer to the actual operations of what are happening with the city. So we can really quickly know if a grant would make sense for us or not make sense for us. Uh, so I attended um, one, Chris has attended um, the other ones, and then I'm on the emails as well. So we're always looking at that information. Uh, so we're going to be, uh, right now we're just kind of kicking it around at this point with UPUD on a waterfall station joint project. Um, so the benefit of it is it's a drought uh, uh, response project. So if we were in a drought, um, you know, we would have access to a waterfall station. Um, the idea is to put it closer up on the UPUD side uh, because they have more probably um, well as well as and we don't. Um, that could change. But um, at this point, that's, that's not, not the case. So it made sense for it to be kind of close to them. So we're just, like I said, kind of in the initial conversations about what that means and what that looks like. But it would be a grant um, that we identified through the IRWM. Awesome. That's good. Um, I'm attending the League of Cities Conference um, September 20th through 22nd. Um, I also met with the APA representative, Jesse Gibbs, to discuss our bench project, and also um, he will be a partner on other economic development projects with city businesses. Uh, so he's, he's, we've been meeting and kind of going over various things. And that should be about Oh, um, yeah, I, d I did send that out to you. Um, for the mock. For the, the, yeah, the mock. Yeah. So it's, we're going to wait on that until they kind of get their engineering, like, absolutely nailed down. There's still a couple changes, um, and they're still having some additional right of way um, conversation. So once they um, have that right of way uh, appraisal, not done, um, then we'll probably start doing some outreach. Uh, and uh, they have a new project manager uh, that I met with, and we're just working through trying to coordinate projects. So if they're, you know, whether it's the sidewalk project or it's the 449 or Francis Street, any of those projects where they're going to open up where any of our search signs are. If those are particular areas where we need to go ahead and change them out, maybe because they're on an INI watch or anything like that, we're coordinating with them to go ahead and take that moment to move the, the water line or move the sewer line um, instead of it getting buried by a sidewalk and then try to make out the field. So um, we're having some really good conversations with that nation, uh, but that discussion in terms of um, the that mobility project will be coming uh, next year. <laughs> Item 9 is council report. Caroline, we'll start with you. I uh, met with uh, Congressman Fentanyl today for that meeting great. Um, I am leaving town. I will be gone September 7th through the 14th, so I will miss yet another museum meeting. But they are looking at um, getting some new founda foundation members. So um, I think they have how many applicants did you see? Three. Three? Okay, great. So anyway, they're, they're working right now on building the foundation and going back up. Well, meeting was up in Durant? That's the museum meeting on Thursday. On Thursday, okay. I will report, uh, we had UWPA on August 22nd. And... Um, we got an update on the Hunter Reservoir Fuel Reduction Project where we um, had the public hearing and adoption of the CEQA. We awarded a contract for the licensed uh, timber operator. There's a total of $1.2 million that was grant funded for that project. We did update our employee handbook. Uh, we did cancel the September meeting um, in preparation for the November 
power outage in the or the, the outage, outage in the, yeah, the yeah. maintenance maintenance outage and prepare for maintenance for November. Mm -hmm. And then I met today with also uh, McClintock, which was a meet and greet, and was well attended. One more thing, we had a, yeah, that's it, that's all I have. Oh, oh Herbie, uh, as well, sorry. Um, I have nothing to report. Went to the McClintock meet and greet, and tomorrow I call them in the CTA. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> um, I'll be with Isabel on that. I also attended the uh, meet and greet. Uh, Senator Gil Alvarez also had representatives there today. Um, it was really fun. It was a good, it was a good I think there was some good simple. connections made it simple and it was to the point. Um, I think hopefully we get some deregulation and different things. And you touched on everything. I mean, it was all about that fuel reduction and the employee handbook. So you touched on all that. That's all. Okay. Um, yeah. Correspondence. Sign three letters. Yeah, they're on. So, any questions? Oh, I'll also be attending League City. Yep. Twenty. 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 That is the 20th. I will also be attending 20th, 21st, and 22nd. I will not. But I'm going to be doing the golf tournament in October. Oh, look at you. Yeah, fun. Okay. Um, calendar. Um, call tomorrow. Uh, museum, you said you weren't going to be able to be there. Planning commission on the 14th. So, okay. Nah. <laughs> like, <laughs> so, uh, last one on the 18th, and then of course we've got our next meeting on the 19th, and then the League of Cities. So, is the Night of the Museum still happening on the 16th? No. No? Okay. They don't want to compete with Rick. Is that the one that moved to the 14th then of October? Yes. Okay. And then any uh, items that her. Yeah, so her she sat on uh, the Central Sierra Economic Development District. She was the um, alternate. Okay. So we she to... sat on CPPA I as the CPPA main CPPA. person. Sherado is the alternate. Do on the West meeting for CPPA. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You I get that one. I can probably take it back. No, that was Gretel. This oh, was Gretel. Gretel. Oh, yeah. I'd like to see the EPA. Yeah. yeah. I think at the yeah. next meeting, let's just have that be an yes. item. Yeah. So, is anything happening in the next okay. two weeks that she's going to be next? No, not that that I that see. Yeah, because one of my committees is there once a quarter. That's CPA. Yeah, that's CPA. Yeah. 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 But Dennis, Dennis really makes mm -hmm. it pretty quick. She does. I, I've, had, I've been and to check out. Yeah. Yeah. And Central Sierra. Oh, the All Hazards. That's every Tuesday. Everyone, um, yeah. every, no, every once a month. Uh, it seemed like so it was every week. That was Brolio. No, 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 but I'm dropping CP. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about it. Tonight. We'll talk about it. Yeah, let's, yeah. let's just know it for next meeting. Okay. okay. Future agenda items? Um. Well, I don't know, so council appointments uh, on various commissions. Uh, we have council discussion of how to appoint uh -huh. um, for the vacancy. Um, we will have a follow up just to give you additional information on that very item. An employee retention thing. Uh, I know yeah, you yeah. were. Yeah, our hope is. Yeah, and then we'll um, bring over the park budget budget actual today. There's not much in terms of the park. I'm totally like that. Is uh, perfect, perfect. Well, just a great consent, right? Just a consent item, it would be for the unit update. Yeah, um, I think the intention was to actually speak to it. Correct me. Okay. 
And is it okay where I put it at the very first? Yeah, time? yeah, yeah, no, that's yeah. perfect. Okay. And even if it's just a don't two, make people two sit second, through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A two yeah. second, nothing has happened, and we have nothing to report. But here's the numbers. Here, you know, this is still what we're at. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And uh, if there's nothing else, we're looking for adjournment. Nope. I'll second. All in favor? Bye. 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 Bye.